Chairman, and thank both of you for your testimony. Thank you for your service. I've been trying to keep track of the testimony uh, in the hearing as it's gone on, but I apologize if I uh, ask questions that have already been covered. Uh, we, we know from what's been said and, and following uh, developments in the area that uh, we see uh, real Chinese sort of aggressive moves. Uh, we saw the, the military moves uh, up against uh, toward Taiwanese airspace. We've seen other actions taken. Um, obviously, the United States also has sort of held its position uh, in the region. What are we doing now? What what's in place now to avoid miscalculations that could lead to unintended escalation uh, and conflict? If you could each uh, talk from the advantage views of your the advantage the perspectives of your departments, Senator. Uh Thank you for your comment and, and for your uh, questions as well. Uh, I would say um, from our position, um, in order to prevent the miscalculation and the risk of that that you've uh, outlined, we're doing a number of things. First of all, we're taking a range of actions to demonstrate the strength of our, uh, the, the strength of our commitment uh, to the region uh, and uh, the strength of our deterrent capabilities and those of our uh, allies and partners and friends. And we're trying to uh, strengthen countries' ability to resist Chinese coercion in all its forms. So I think those actions uh, are the most important steps that we can take, and the main focus for uh, this administration and me and my job is how can we best support our allies, partners, and friends across the region uh, to support that rules-based order uh, that is uh, under pressure from the People's Republic of China. But secondly, Senator, there is an element uh, involved uh, in our uh, diplomacy directly uh, with the People's Republic of China as well. Um, as you uh, have seen, uh, President Biden uh, recently engaged in a virtual meeting with President Xi Jinping. Uh, one of the main objectives of that meeting was to make sure as our competition becomes increasingly intense, we also engage in intense diplomacy at the most senior levels to uh, reduce the risk of miscalculation that could veer into uh, and unintended conflict. So I do think that that is an important element uh, of what we do. We do need to continue to signal at senior levels to uh, the PRC leadership the depth of our concerns uh, and a desire to avoid miscalculation. Uh, but again, Senator, I would say the most important part of what we're doing, I would argue, across the region is the work uh, with our allies and partners to shore up the regional order. No, I, I agree with um, the overall strategy that the president has put forward. Uh, I, but I do want to push a little bit more, and maybe on the defense side uh, yes, as well, as to what kind, what operationally is in place uh, to make sure lines of communication are open in order to avoid uh, miscalculation. Between the United States and the PRC specifically? Yes. Or, yes. Um, so, uh, I would echo Ambassador Crittenbrink's uh, comments that clearly one of the uh, key priorities for the administration and the president said this clearly is to try to develop guardrails on the relationship uh, and there is uh, uh, going to be follow-up to the, the president's meeting uh, to try to do that in practice. Uh, from the perspective of the Defense Department, uh, we have been working to renew uh, military to military relations with the PLA over the course of the last year with a, with a very laser focus on questions of crisis communications and crisis management. Um, we have had uh, interactions within the Office of the Secretary of Defense uh, and interactions uh, with Indo-PACOM and uh, some of their PLA counterparts. So we're in the process of renewing those efforts. Appreciate that, obviously, and uh, I, know, I know the chairman and others have mentioned that. If we had an ambassador in place, uh, those kind of communications uh, uh, could be even more effective and, and more clear. I think it's uh, hurting our national security every day uh, that the Ambassador Nick Burns' uh, nomination is being held up. Uh, my last question is this. Uh, look, China uh, has long taken the position that eventually they want what they claim will be the peaceful reunification of China. Obviously, their actions have been anything but peaceful. But do you note a real change in position taken and the tone taken by President Xi in his comments on Taiwan uh, compared to many of his predecessors? 
Senator, thank you. Um, I don't know that um, the tone or the rhetoric uh, has been dramatically different from uh, Beijing. There is still uh, occasionally a, uh, a reiteration of a stated desire to uh, resolve the situation in their view peacefully, and yet uh, China has never ruled out the use of force, uh, and uh, that continues uh, to this day. I think the dramatic change that we've seen in recent months is years and years has been in, in Chinese actions and behavior, including its coercive and bullying behavior vis-a-vis -vis Taiwan, and that is uh, our primary concern, uh, and that is, is what is driving uh, primarily our response rather than a focus on rhetoric, Senator. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank, thank you. you, Senator. Senator Young is with us virtually. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman.